channel the ink reader and today i thought i was gonna do something new for my channel and with new is nothing fancy i just mean that i am the host and creator of the book club for my company i thought it was nice chatting very briefly about how it's structured how i decide to structure it basically and what kind of choices of books we will i will present to my book club members next week to choose from so first of all i divided the book club in two so we decided that there are gonna be two books for each bi-monthly meeting and then those two groups will read different books my company in general is quite kind of big and i wanted to give people more than one choice of book out of book clubs tend to die down just because people stop reading or maybe if you don't enjoy the choice they just don't pick up the book and then they don't come to the meeting so i thought if we have two groups with two different choices this will give a bit more freedom to people to have room and choose between two different genres and two different titles i am meeting the groups at different times to different weeks and i decided to make a discussion based on a door game so i created a powerpoint slide where participants will have first of all to rate the books and then they will have to choose a door and once you click on the door you'll be taken to a question related to the book we just read it's a game that i created very quickly if someone by any chance is interested in seeing how i did it then let me know and i might do a video on that then when we get toward the end of the discussion in the last half an hour to 20 minutes we discuss the choices for the next five months and we pick a randomized genre so again i created a book game where they click on a book and the genre will appear randomly and according to the genre that comes out we have three choices three titles in the genre among them we'll have to choose from and usually we just have a discussion together and we vote which title we sounds more appealing basically at the moment at least and then once both groups have met and chose a random genre and choose and chose a title for the genre I post a blog or send an email and people can say I want to join group one with this title I want to join group two with this other title and the only rule is a title is a immediately excluded if someone else has read already the book as i want it to be as inclusive as possible so if a title has been already read is out of the question that we will read that the other rule is that if someone for example group one has read a fantasy in the previous two months if fantasy as a genre appears as a randomly pick again they will be able to choose another genre so group one will not read a fantasy book twice but if someone is belonging to group one in may and june doesn't mean that it will have to be in group one in july and august participants in the book club will wait until genres and titles are decided and then they can tell me if they want to belong in group one or group two every two months basically so it's quite flexible very malleable and i try to get people to basically have as much choice as possible considering that they just choose between two books and two genre basically but at the end of the day it's fun to have that choice or maybe they want to join both and i had a couple of those that yeah i'm gonna read both books i'm gonna participate in both groups which is you know even better so i'm gonna quickly run through the choices that we have for the next bi month and these the idea behind this is just it can give you an idea of new books you want might try out. These are not necessarily new releases. I pick them up according to reviews and I try to be as inclusive as possible. And the majority of them I've not read myself. So I'm gonna share the synopsis, but I don't have a personal opinion on them as of now. If you follow my reviews and my wrap-ups and all of that, I might get around to read all of them sooner or later. So you know what I think about them. But at the moment, just take them as new ideas for books that you might want to check out. Okay, so the first genre we have the literary fiction and the three choices for literary fiction for this bi month are Everything I Never Told You, which is the story of a Chinese American family in the 70s living in USA and they are struck by tragedy. And this story is about the aftermath of a tragedy, but also a lot of flashbacks on what led to the tragedy itself. And I've already read these and I'll link it up below my review of this book. And we have the Midnight Library by Matt Haig. And this has received a lot of praises. I've not read it yet, but I know that this is about this woman who finds this library where when she reads a book is a version of her life of what could have been. And it's kind of a sliding doors, the movie, um, for what I believe at the moment. I've not read it, as I said. So it's fascinating because we're going to follow this woman 
for our potential lives. And then lastly, for literary fiction, modern fiction, we have On Earth We Are Briefly Gorgeous, the Ocean Vong, I think I'm probably butchering this. And this is the letter of a son to his mother, and he discusses his life and I think there is a revelation at one point, so something has happened to this family. And this family originated in Vietnam, but I think they moved to USA at one point. It is this defined as an exploration of race, identity and masculinity in nowadays. This one I'm definitely gonna pick up. All of them I'm definitely picking up. Well, one I've already did, to be fair. Then for the non-fiction category, we've got The Five. This is by Hayley Rubinhold. I've already read this. It is a non-fiction book written by a historian and delves more into the lives from birth to death of the five canonic victims of Jack the Ripper. And it gives shapes to the lives of these women that have been defined as prostitutes for so long, while many of them were not even sex workers. So it's very fascinating one, it's definitely one that I'd recommend. Then we've got The New Jim Crow. This is a relative old non-fiction book and it's written around the time that Obama was President of the United States of America and it's a social discussion about race and discrimination and how the justice system works if you are black and have a low social economic status. And finally we've got the Romanov for non-fiction. This is again the story of six generation I believe of Zarinas and Sars and I don't know basically anything about how Zarinas and how the Russian royal family worked and so I'm very curious to read this book and learn more. Romance. Now with romance I all I chose books that were not just fluffy romance books just because the majority of people in the book club were kind of against the romance but a few weren't so again to be inclusive I decided to keep the genre but try to find stories that integrated the romance elements or they were cute but also had social commentary or were historical fiction at the same time where paired some other elements to the plot that made them interesting. So I started with The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, which is a book that I've read and loved. I couldn't possibly go wrong with this one. And this is sort of this woman now elderly. She decides to finally disclose all her life and love life uh, to a journalist. And she was a huge star back in the days. So the journalist jumps at the opportunity of getting the story directly from the source. And there is a lot to uncover because Evelyn has been married seven times and yet she has a big secret. Then I chose Get Alive Chloe Brown, which is probably the most fluffy and contemporary uh, choice we have. And this is the story of Chloe. Chloe suffers from chronic illness and she is a geek with a list of things that she wants to accomplish and she wants to go out more and enjoy life despite her illness. And among the list is being in bed, going out there and have sex with the strangers and things like that. But she needs a little bit of help. And she meets Red, who is supposedly this very bad guy, motorbike tattoo artist or something of a sort of guy who's gonna help her out in fulfilling her list. And then we've got Fingers Meet by Sarah Waters. This is an old historical fiction book, but it's a book which tells the story of a thief that gets in the house of this wealthy family and her, um, I think, job would be to befriend the mistress in the house so that they can steal things from her and instead she ends up falling in love with the mistress of the house. For historical fiction, the first choice we have for this by month is For Winds by Christine Hanna. She's the same who wrote uh, The Nightingale, which I already read. This takes place in 1934 in USA during the Great Depression and follows these protagonists, Elsa Martinelli, that has to embark on this journey to California in search of a better life. Then we got Pachinko by Min Jin Lee. This is the story of this Korean family that for a series of events have to migrate to Japan and how their life in Japan are shaped by their Korean culture and how they're probably discriminated and how they live. And I heard again amazing things about this book. And finally we got Homegoing by Ya Yazi. I'm butchering the name, I apologize for that. And this follows the story of these two sisters born in 18th century Ghana and how when they migrate their descendant lives. So it's an intergenerational story packed in a 
fairly small book, but I've heard that it packs a punch and that's extremely well written and it's amazing as a story. Thriller and crime. First of all, we've got I'm Thinking of Ending Things, which is a book I've already read and I've done a review for that, so I'll link it down below. I also watched the Netflix adaptation, link it down below again. And the Viz is an amazing thriller very very disturbing and it's a story of this woman that goes on a trip with her boyfriend to finally meet her boyfriend's parents however she has a lot of doubts about their relationship and she wants to end things and something happens on the trip and i don't want to say anything else we've got the Khan. this is by saima mir and this is the story of this woman she's a successful london lawyer once one day her father who is a pakistani crime lord living back in Pakistan, I believe, is killed and she has to go back and avenge him or something of the sort. And it sounds, it's a fairly recent release, I believe, and it sounds amazing. And finally, we have My Sister Vs. Her Killer, which is a book that I've seen around Booktube a few times. And this is the story of his two sisters, one of which tends to kill her boyfriends. And the other sister has to go around and fix the mess and help her sister to get away with it. So the premise sounds fascinating and I think it plays a lot of the sister being a psychopath and of this other sister being probably fed up with having to clean her mess but at the same time it's her sister so she doesn't know what to do. I don't know, I'm just speculating at this point but I mean I would not want to be in you know the shoes of that poor girl who has to clean up the mess of her sister. <laughs> then we've got horror choices. Horror choice we've got Bunny and this is the story of this girl who moves to college to do a master she doesn't have many friends, she doesn't know many people and then one day she gets invited for a series of events I guess uh, to this club, after school club called Bunny where very weird things are going on. We got the only good Indians and these, I actually did have these on audiobook but I think because of the format, the audiobook format was not the good choice but this is the story of these native Indian Americans and how they end up in trouble during a hunt trip and now this hunt trip years later is coming back to hunt them, I guess. And then another book I've already read because I read a lot of horrors, The Southern Book Club Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix, which is the story of these housewives and her book club and how all of a sudden they have to defend their families and themselves against the new neighbors that comes to town and is up to no good. This is not necessarily the typical vampire you have, this is a very murder she wrote kind of book where you've got definitely not your typical protagonist handling a creature that that is defined as a vampire but it's not the vampire we're usually used to I guess. It's very murder mystery at the same time and I really enjoy that and again I'll link it down below the um, video where I'm wrapping this up. Then for fantasy we have the first choice Invisible Life of Eddie LaRue by V.E. Schwab, a book that I've already um, listened to on audiobook and loved and this is the story of Eddie who is living in 18th, 17th centuries in France and she is due to be married to this very boring guy and she says, you know what, I'm not having it. So she makes a deal with what I call the devil but he is never identified as such and the deal is you can live forever so you don't have to marry this guy, you're gonna, you know, go and do what you want but nobody you're gonna ever meet is gonna remember you. She takes the deal just because she actually didn't have much to say in the conditions of the deal and then after centuries of being alone one day she gets into a bookstore and when she comes back the guy behind the counter remembers her. The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. First read of 2021 for me. I love TJ Klune. Like I love the guy. Like everything he writes probably is something that I will love. This is the story of this guy who works with kind of social services for in this magic world where they got orphanage for children that have magic and their families do not want them because although magic is out there, people are very much discriminated if they have any magical power. Linus, our guy, works with social services as the task of going to this orphanage where there is a very peculiar child and he has to make the decision if the orphanage can still keep going or he has to be shut down. And he goes and he meets the children and from the level of comedy and of heartwarming content in this 
I cannot recommend these enough. So I'm definitely something that I wanted to propose to the book club because I think everybody will love this book. And the last choice we have is The Once Future Witches by Alex E. Harrow. This story takes place in 1893 during the witch trials. And I think it follows this bunch of women that are accused of being witches once they are not. And all of a sudden they have to defend themselves and their loved ones against these accusations. And I guess they will become witches. I don't know. And finally we have modern classics. Um, I tried to went with classics but we have some of us that did a literature degree in university so they had read basically all the classics and I had to find new ones. So the first one is Virginia Woolf the Orlando which is a classic I've never heard before before doing research for the book club but this is a story of, of this man who at one point through his life turns into a woman and I don't know anything else about this but I'm fascinated and Virginia Woolf is someone I've not read before so I think this would be a great starting point, sounds very fascinating. We have Rebecca by Daphne de Mourier, one of my favourite books, it's gothic fiction at its best and this is the story of this woman who marries a second marriage of this guy, his first wife disappeared and she is whisked off to his mansion in countryside in England and when she goes there she finds that the staff of the house and everybody in the city are still much hanging on to the first wife. I don't want to say anything else but this is a modern classic for a reason and if you're into gothic fiction without anything too scary at all you cannot miss Rebecca. And then we got the remains of the day by Kazu Ishiguro. This is the second chance I gave to Ishiguro because I've read some of his most famous works um, one actually and I really didn't like it so let's try if I like this one and this is the story of this guy who goes on a motor trip in the countryside in England. I don't know anything else I think though that it's mentioned in the synopsis that this trip which is supposed to be just six days long becomes a trip back in the past on the war and an unrequited love. So these are all the choices. Thank you for watching. I hope you can find some good recommendation from this. Every two months I come up with completely different choices so I might do this one again in the future. It's nice just you know exchanging ideas on books that you might want to pick up and I cover different genres so it might be useful for a lot of people I guess I hope. If you follow my reviews and my wrap-ups you'll find out <laughs> which books are picked and which genres are picked for the next two months because I will have to read them unless I've already read them and I really enjoy doing the research. I get a lot of inspiration and new books that I add to my TBRs by doing so so finger crossed the book club will take off and go well and be a success in general. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a good night, day, depending on where you are, and I'll see you next time. Ciao!